And now for the Monero development segment. Hey guys. How's it? How's it going, man? Hey Taxulu. Hey Douglas. Hey, How are awesome. you? Thanks for thanks for uh, doing another dev report. Appreciate it. Yeah. So today we can choose if we only want a short dev report or if we if we try again with uh, the atomic swaps. You think we could? You think we could pull it off this time? Well, how, how's it looking? I'm I'm I'm, I'm unsure because I I'm running the software and it's uh, behaving uh, not really like it, it it should like have have you successfully done one on your own off the show no <laughs> ah. <laughs> but uh, okay i mean we can try if it fails another time okay not not bad i think uh but uh, it's interesting to see we only have like uh, five offers Mm -hmm. And one offer is like 50% above the regular price. Interesting. And one is 20% over it. But I think uh, we just can try it to... Um, yeah, give it a go. Send some Monero to the uh, general fund wallet. This one here. So you're, you're going to try to swap Bitcoin for Monero? Yes. I'm selling Bitcoin and I am receiving Monero, but uh, I'll send the Monero to the general fund. Okay, what okay. happened now? I changed the Monero address and then, okay, now oh. it's, it's refreshing. So let's bring so up my... For, just so for people don't know what we're doing. So we're using uh, Samurai Wallet. They, they recently added the ability to do... Bitcoin to Monero atomic swaps through their wallet. And now we're, we're testing it out. We tried testing it out two weeks ago, but we ran into some difficulties. Um, if there's somebody who's successfully done it and wants to share their screen at some point, if we, if this isn't successful, you're, you're more than welcome to jump up here and, and do it for us and, and show us what's going on. Um, but yeah, let's, let's give it a go. Uh, I will use this seller. And now I'm going to buy Monero. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. I, I read about uh, this process um, takes up to up to three hours. So we will just start now and I will later report if it has worked or not. But as you can see, it always fails somehow. Um, mm. This is the 18th beta version. Uh, last uh, two weeks ago, we were on number version uh, version number seventeen. Yeah. Okay, and it failed so, again. Uh, let's see. Um, there was a some release notes. I screenshotted them earlier, so they updated the Monero version to the latest version, um, and. It has improvements on the connect network connectivity over Tor mm -hmm. and some bug fixes, like uh, they had uh, a fix in the UI settings. But as you can see, when I go to the settings, nothing appears anymore. So for me, the new version is even worse than the old one. Huh. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, like I said, anybody out there that's successfully doing atomic swaps on Samurai that's down to share their screen and show us a successful swap, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you for it. We'll, we'll pay you back. I'll give you, I'll give you the, uh, well, actually, you can just swap it to yourself, obviously, but I'll, I'll tip you anyway if you do it. Um, because uh, for not some sure. reason, we're not having luck. I'm not sure what's happening, but it doesn't seem to work. But um, I set everything up like hmm. um, in the instructions. And what 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 I, was the process to set things up? I mean, you just have like, what did you do from? So I had to download um, the Samurai um, 
XMR BTC swap GUI from their repo. Mm -hmm. mm. Where is it? I think I have it somewhere here. So you go to their release page mm -hmm. and look for their newest release. It's code.samurai.io and the project's name is Comet Swaps Java. Then I have downloaded uh, the Mac version. Mm -hmm. I checked the hashes and then I got uh, this folder. I go to lib and run app.jar and that's what we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's still not stable and still not working. Now, does it have to download um do you know are you basically running a full monero node and a full bitcoin node at the same like don't you need to be running those to to do these swaps no uh it's connecting to remote uh, nodes okay so they have they have remote nodes set up so people that do this don't need to be running full full bitcoin and monero nodes to do this no okay yeah, because like I said, we, we had basic swap on yesterday and to run their client, you have to, at this point, at this stage, you have to be running a full Bitcoin and full Monero node uh, on, you know, on your, on your own to do it. They don't have uh, a way to uh, do it with remote nodes yet. They're working on that. Yes. All right. Well, we, we can move on for, unfortunately, we ran into an issue again, but we'll, we'll get it. We'll keep trying. This is good. This is good. I mean, this is, this is real, right? This is real. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're having, if you're having an issue, then I imagine uh, I, I most certainly would have an issue. So um, we'll, we'll figure it out at some point live on the show. And uh, we could test, we could test basic swaps too. Maybe you could do that one on the next dev report. Next time you come on, that would be, yes. that would be interesting yes. too. And then there's even unstoppable swap. Mm -hmm. These are even other guys, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with the dev report. So I show you a project, uh, Tip XMR, which I am involved as well, as you can see here. So Tip XMR started um, in 2020 and is uh, three and a half years old now. And it's a project for streamers like you are Douglas with uh, Monerotopia or, or Monero Talk. Imagine having a QR code or a banner in your show where it says, go here and tip it uh, with Monero. And you go to tipxmr slash Monerotopia, and then you can as a viewer, you can uh, enter a message and then you can send a tip with Monero and it will show up in the live stream. Like that's a typical thing you see on Twitch or, or YouTube live streams. No, is, is it up and running? Because we're literally trying to build this right now. I have somebody working on, on this project. Um, <laughs> I think it's a slightly you know different approach Yes. Oh really? So, do you have someone working on something? Yeah, please? I do. Yeah, I, do. I never tried. I never ended up getting around to uh, trying out the Luke Smith one, but that one hasn't. Um, I don't even know if it works. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're starting something uh, from scratch. Basically, um, we have somebody who's going to give it a go. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he can but do. I don't, don't want to um, say his name yet. The browser window, like widget for OBS on the housing, because that's a typical way to do it. No, 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 no. We're, we're going to do a, a workaround way. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go into detail yet, just because I want to see see what we we come up with first. But it's, it should be a pretty simple MVP uh, that would effectively allow us to do it. Uh, maybe not in the in the best form, but yeah, this this one that you're presenting here. So the does this where where would the tips show up? Like how would they be viewed? Um, expl explain a little bit more. And is it is it currently functioning? Could could somebody get this up and running right now? No, it's uh, not working yet. It's okay. uh, still in early development stage. Even okay. after three years, uh, that's because we 
restarted the project uh, two times and my friend Alex, he was on Monero Talk as well. He Oh, love Alex. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, Alex is awesome. He he was so motivated, so uh, a few days ago he started to do all the work by himself mm -hmm. and uh, he's really motivated and now we want uh, we are starting again to work on it. And I brought you a video from Alex who demos um, the actual thing we have right now. Are you ready? Oh, OK. Tell, tell us what's going on. Wait, wait t tell us. Uh... Uh, yes, um, now you're a streamer registering at um, TipXMR. So it first creates a wallet for you. And this wallet is not on the server. It's fully non-custodial running in your browser. Mm -hmm. That's uh, because we are using Monero TypeScript which is a library that contains uh, the Monero Wasm wallet. So it's a full wallet inside of the browser running in the background. So now you can add uh, things about your stream and then your stream can be found on tip XMR. And you can choose maybe later between a premium plan or a basic plan, which wouldn't cost much. But um, yeah, you will be seeing all streamers registered to TipXMR on one page. And then you can find uh, streamers and, and tip them Monero. And they're and then, here uh, right in, in the show, yeah. So there's no okay, kind so of overlay that's being used for this at all. Like, yeah, how 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 is the you know so let's say somebody sent you know I, I registered a tip XMR, um, somebody can find the tip XMR page that I have when they send that tip and comment. How is it being displayed on my live stream? So tip XMR will generate a link, and with that link you go into your OBS and add a new browser overlay. Hmm. Oh, and see, that's what I was asking before. Okay, so it's um, using where I OBS. think Doug said his is not like that, but yours is using the OBS browser overlay, which is the standard way to do it. To be completely mm -hmm. fair, that's the standard way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious uh, to hear about whatever solution uh, will come from from you and whoever this person you're working with, Doug. Yeah, I mean, ours is is uh, simpler. This is actually this is actually this is this is interesting. So it's good to see that there's progress going on here. Uh, maybe we have to, you know, reach out to you guys. Mm. So we, uh, or people can just switch yeah. to uh, free software, which is OBS. It is. It does. It does take uh, a little bit to set up, and you don't have the same like platform like you do with Streamyard. Like you'd have mm. to facilitate having people come on and off stage in a different way. Yeah, but... yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, we we could do it also much more easy when we would run the wallet on the server. Uh, tip XMR would already already be shipped like this, but uh, we wanted to have the maximum freedom for all of our users. So mm -hmm. we are going the non-custodial way. Yeah, I think we're going to go a different we're going to go a different route and make it kind of more user user friendly, um, but not not as pure in terms of you know running your running your own wallet. Um, we shall see. Very cool, man. I, I love that you guys now picked it back up and are are running with it. Yes. Yeah, that's a really it's, awesome project. Yeah. Yes. It's happening, guys. Yes. So next topic. Here is another project. It's called uh, Test Drop from Laretelli. I don't know how to pron pronounce uh, this. Um, you see, it's an uh, active development, and it's also a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for Monero. It's not ready yet, but 
it's been actively worked on. I just wanted to show it to you. What is this one? Called? Oh, the narrow shop. Yep, we've heard of this one. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as uh, they now, does, will... is Nar narrow shop is trying to actually be like decentralized. Yes. Very cool. So we'll have an eye on this project. So next one is Havino. Um, they had a pre-release. Um, and I have it running here. We can start it up. Oh, yeah. I'm really glad to see Havino has uh, gotten more development. OK. Uh-oh. It seems like it's damaged. Oh, right. No, I, I think I have to do... Did you download the Linux binary? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me just uh, copy this. And now we should be able to start Havino. Yes. Have you ever seen Monero and Habino running? Uh, we had them present at Monerotopia, uh, but I, ha I have not, uh, no, I have not tried it out myself. So it's always connecting over the Tor network, just like this. I really like this. So it, awesome. uh, you are real. Is there it's primarily a fork of BISC, right? Yes. I think the main three things you can say about it, uh, which things are different from BISC, is that uh, Monero obviously is the base currency for every other uh, trade. It's like currency. so much like superior. It's that's such a huge improvement. Yeah, and you don't have the DAO. There's no BISC Monero token or anything like this. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think it's uh, superior. And this is how it looks, yeah. There's nice. not oh, much it's going on. on. Yeah, state net, state chat, right. And just to explain to everybody, so this is going to allow people to trade peer to peer uh, Bitcoin for Monero and I guess whatever other coins eventually get added. Uh, yeah. By putting putting the buyer and the seller together, it's not it's not an atomic swap. It's uh, it, it it goes through escrow, correct? Yes, it's like um, just like BISC. You know, it's uh, it has even uh, fiat trading pairs, which makes it a popular choice for uh, fiat on and off ramps, peer to peer. No centralized exchange involved yeah yeah so some something like this is actually more more akin to like a local monero than really uh like we saw with what samurai wallet was doing with atomic swaps mm, yes I, if, but i think I here here it's even more built into the protocol as well mm -hmm. so there's no company behind this software you know you can run it right. even if nobody will run it you can still run it right and if then you have and then you have mediators that are are part of the ecosystem that mediate the the escrow correct not sure about that i think in bisc it's like you have to pay down some amount in Bitcoin, which you cannot trade, but it's like it's here for if you if you are cheating, they will um, take the Bitcoin you you locked in into the protocol. So you will lose more than you gain from your uh, cheating or theft. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've never, I never used, I've never used BIS, so I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure on how that's operating. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's thought, different for Habino. I don't know. I just know for BIS, yeah. you have to pay down some Bitcoin as insurance. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, for part of the um, the bond. Yeah. Right, but is there, are there mediators then involved, or it's it's kind of all automatic? I think there's mediators. No, now. they have people. Yep, this yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. Very cool. Maybe uh, once that's when, when does that go on live? I don't think they have said when they are going live. It's got to be close. I don't, mm. I don't know what they're still what they're still working on at this point. All right. All right well, exciting. Next topic: Cake Wallet. So Cake Wallet had a release uh, almost two weeks ago for uh, for Cake Wallet and Monero.com Wallet, but uh, we don't know much anything than bug fixes. But they have a pre-release, which isn't uh, released officially on the App Store and Play Store yet, but you can find it here on GitHub. And Oh, yeah, you might be talking about this real quick. So um, we have so, so the improved wallet recovery and air to tolerance. So there's been some issues uh, with people, especially related to background sync where the wallet ends up getting corrupted and it has to sync from zero again, which is incredibly frustrating when opening a wallet. It's like syncing from zero, partially due to the background sync of the OS killing the app too fast. Um, so we've enhanced this in two ways. So now the app itself, Cake Wallet itself, makes individual backups for every wallet after you've opened it successfully. So it has internal backups. So if there's corruption, it should restore to uh, a previous known good version. So you shouldn't have to resync from zero. And then two, um, background sync has been enhanced a little bit, but there's also an option on Android when you turn background sync on. It'll request, and you don't have to turn this on if you want, but it'll request to give Cake Wallet unrestricted battery, which will prevent Cake Wallet from constantly being closed by the OS. And it'll actually keep your wallet synced pretty much all the time. Um, with the aggressive setting, not that it's running in the background all the time, but anytime it does go to background sync, it'll sync up all the way. So background sync is much more effective. Unfortunately, on iOS, uh, this is not going to be the case because iOS is incredibly restrictive in what apps are allowed to um, run in the background long term. And you have to request to Apple um, to get these kind of permissions. But for Android users, background sync is much improved. Is it still syncing in the background if you're on battery and not on the wall? Uh, it depends on the setting. So if you're on unobtrusive, it has to be charging and it has to be idle. But if you set it to aggressive, it will uh, basically sync whenever. Uh, but we're soon, soon, uh, I'm not sure if it's in the next update or be later, but soon we're going to improve the backup system and give you full granular control on the, the amount of time it will sync, so how often it'll sync, and then you'll be able to choose like if it's allowed to sync on battery, on data, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to see Cake Wallet in the wild again this year at Minerotopia and, you know, Minerujo and some of the others, like, uh, to see how things perform, right? Because it, it was it was interesting to see when there were so many of us trying to use Monero at the same time live in, you know, in a marketplace scenario. Um, the, the main issues, yeah, we were running in with, was with, with syncing and it was more an internet issue. Uh, people didn't have good internet connections and then good connections to, to nodes. So we're really going to try to focus on that for Monerotopia to, to make it a successful, you know, two days where people are seamlessly transacting. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that again in the wild. Yeah, I, I mean, that is one of the downsides of Monero right now is that you have to, I mean, you know, a lot of other cryptos, but um, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, sync if you want to have full uh, custodial ship over your, over your funds, you got to sync yourself. And with Monero, it's intensive because it's got to check all the transactions to see if it's yours. Uh, so hopefully in the, in the future with that new view key, it'll make using a light wallet server much more accessible to people. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm excited for Monero Nodo and that being an easy way to run a light wallet server. And hopefully we'll have LWS built into Cake Wallet uh, by the time those are those are being shipped and stuff. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, is that is that is that on, it's on the list, right? It's on the to-do list? Adding it is, it is, yeah. It's something okay. that uh, I've, I've talked to Vic about. Yeah, get that going, man. Come on. Work your magic behind the scenes. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So, so at the conference, right. So we're thinking, we're thinking one of the things that could help is that we have right. Our own local, uh, old Monero nodes running there locally that people can connect to that, sh that should help things alleviate things a little bit. Right. If we have nodes nearby up and running, I'm not clogging the internet because everyone's trying to sync all at the same time. <laughs> Right, what I'm saying doing connect, it locally. connecting locally, right? Wouldn't yeah. that be an improvement? Oh yeah, that would be okay. way yeah. faster, way better. Yes. Yeah. So we'll we'll have that at the conference, uh, local nodes running, um, and that that should help us out a little bit. Awesome. Cool. Next awesome, topic. Ellen. Yeah. What else you got? Oh, Tari. Tari, yeah. Um, when? 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 Two weeks. Yeah, when, Two weeks. When might may not? Yeah. Soon. <laughs> soon. TM. <laughs> so, they have announced it's uh, almost uh, three weeks ago that soon they will hit uh, their launch. Yeah, we can almost touch it. And <laughs> this is why I have looked at um, the GitHub and what they are doing. So they have already a release candidate uh, five for their version 1.0. So I have downloaded uh, this suite. Uh, they call it suite. And it um, that suite contains um, a wallet, a merge mining proxy, a very, miner, very excited and, about the merge mining. Yeah. yeah. And that merge mining is happening with the Monero mainnet mm -hmm. chain. So they are using uh, the security of the Monero network for their network. And I think that's a very uh, clever idea because it's a new project. And for the beginning, it's good to uh, be with a secure chain. Yeah. That's so cool. Atari is going to also merge mine. What was the other one that said that recently? Was it DarkFi? DarkFi, yes. yeah. DarkFi, yeah. okay. So DarkFi uh, and Atari. Yeah, very, very exciting. So it's going to be interesting to see when Tari launches, are we going to see an uptick in Monero hash rate, right? And if we do, that's very promising and exciting for this concept that of merge mining bringing more hash power to Monero as somebody who may have not been mining Monero, but they're into, you know, they, they, they want to start mining Tari and they're going to be mining Monero simultaneously. Does that then bring uh, more hash power to, to the Monero network, which is certainly something we can use making and making Monero mining more profitable, right? Because now you're mining Monero and simultaneously mining Tari and DarkFi. Um, I think I think it's very exciting to see how how that plays out, and if it, it plays out in that direction, it's going to just be kind of like one one le one other box that gets checked for Monero in terms of things we need to do, right? So things big on strengthening each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you guys think it's going to play out that way? I hope so. Yes, I, I see. I don't see why not, right? Can you guys explain what Tari is? Yeah. Or what what its aim is? It's it's not easy for me to to understand and explain. I don't know. I, I, it's been years since I spoke to them, but I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like an Ethereum, uh, you know, a, a private a private a private based Ethereum. I'm sure the Tar people would kill thing, kill me for saying that. Like, uh, yeah, an EVM based project. Yeah. Okay. But honestly, it's been it's been too long since I've <laughs> interviewed them or looked at it. That I kind of. You know, uh, forgot what, you know what it's doing other than the, the other than the merge mining part. But it's going to oh. allow for simple, right? Simple smart contracts. Um, easy, it's going to be easy to to launch uh, NFTs on Tari. Um, it's you know, it's it's going to be essentially easy to to build applications on it versus something like Monero that's just purely digital cash. They're making it a protocol that you can build on top of and build apps on. Uh, one of the use cases they've always talked about from day one is like ticketing. So the ability to build uh, like uh, launch and sell sell tickets um, using using Tari. So 
which I guess is similar to an NFT. Um, but that's that's a use case that they're always talking about. But yeah, I, I, it, it, the elevator, I don't know what the elevator pitch is these days for Tari. Yeah, I tried to run the node. So first of all, I started uh, the Tor client on my machine here. And then we can start um, the node. And it looks like this when you start up. I think it's um, funny. And yes, then it uh, will start to seek for connections and peers. Mm, I ran a Tari node like four or five years ago. Hmm. And it worked back, back then, but it doesn't seem to find connections right now. And I already mined some uh, Tari testnet uh, coins and I bought a t-shirt with it. And the t-shirt, you could buy it inside of the iOS and Android wallet. And I can show to you um, the wallet here on my phone as well. So let's open up Tari. And let's create a new wallet. And have a look at the UI UX. I think it's really a nice wallet and it has nice animations and it makes a very premium feeling if it wouldn't crash. Let's try this again. Oh, I see you, Mr. Graffino, as man of culture. <laughs> no. How did you know that it's Graffino S? I'm just assuming. But you've got the default black wallpaper, so. Oh, yeah. And I think it's a vanadium. By the way, you might want to turn... So you're on a Pixel 8. You might have... Do you have memory tagging turned on in the settings? Yes. Okay, you might want to turn that off for Tari if it's crashing or getting frozen. If you go to the... Well, you can go to the individual app settings on Tari. Like, if you tap and hold on it. Or, yeah, do that. There you go. Oh, it is disabled. It's disabled by default. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not disabled. using that. Uh, of course, I tested this uh, before the show, and then it worked. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's working. Maybe. It's not. <laughs> you should see a really nice uh, address. It's generating with emojis. Yeah, unfortunately. Get fluffy um, pony on to talk about Tari again. Yeah, well, I'm sure. I'm sure we will at some point. We'll get the, somebody from the Tari team. I, I mean, I interviewed them numerous times now over the course of you know over the years. They they started this project a while ago. I mean, that's the thing that they they miss the NFT craze, right? So obviously it's still there, but they they kind of miss the the craziness of when it was NFTs. Like I thought that's when. Atari was going to launch because it's really aiming to be a platform for easily creating NFTs uh, with a privacy-based protocol. Okay, and what I have seen is that P2Pool has a branch which is called Merge Mining and is they're actively working on it. Mm. Yay, and, uh, that's awesome. They, they are making the ways for Atari Merge Mining. Oh, cool. Pretty nice. They're getting on that Very early. Cool. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, if I if I can turn on Tari mining on my on my goo packs, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly I'll certainly click that button. Maybe try clearing the uh, the app's data, resetting it. Unless you already tried that. I have uninstalled the app and installed it now. I see. By the way, I saw people in the chat saying uh, any success with getting Goopax up and running uh, uh, 
yes, it should be should be super easy for anybody to do. I mean, I can do it. So yeah, uh, if you're having easy. if you're having trouble, uh, jump up on the show during viewers on stage. Um, we can talk you through it. But simple as downloading, running running the client, gets up and running, piece of software, and then you just have to click the start button on first you have to enter your monero address uh click the start button on p2 pool and then click the start button on xmr rig and that's it you just let it run mm, all right well this ain't working. all right yep any, any, seems... anything else no that's it that all right man the death report. That, was, that was great that was great you covered a lot um Looking forward to having you on again. Maybe, uh, yeah, whenever whenever you're ready to jump on again. I'm sure that there's always development happening. Unfortunately, experimental software do be like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, my demos are not really working. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at least the report from what happened in the last two weeks is correct. <laughs> well, what I, what I like about your demos is they're real, right? Like, so... Uh, it, you're, you're somebody who's trying to get this stuff working so it's just showing you where things currently really are at right it's not it's not a demo being performed by the you know the person Steve behind Jobs. the project yeah it's it's <laughs> you're you're a user trying to use it so it's more shows a problem with the with the project than than, than you right where that where that these things aren't working yet right. um thank you man yeah yeah thanks for the housing